Yes, good morning to everyone. I have an excuse to use the presentation today. I told Zohar that I'm not feeling so good, so I'll be speaking less and showing more. Hopefully that I'll pass these 15 minutes without too many questions from the side of the audience. Okay. First of all, I have to say that uh, these meetings between judges from Delaware and uh, Columbia University and other universities and Kiriakono universities and judges from Israel and lawyers that are dealing with corporate cases means a lot to us. I mean, we look always at Delaware, what you're doing, your ruling, your sentence, and I have to say that we get a weekly report about the new ruling that coming from Delaware, and if we don't get it, the lawyers in Israel will show it and will be will, will show it to us every day that there is a new ruling like the MFW that I got the decision, the ruling from my assistant this the second day, but lawyers that are present here in this uh, room they have, been, have been so anxious to let me know that the ruling of the Chancery Court was affirmed by the Supreme Court of Delaware once, one time after the other, in one case after the other. So in similar cases that are, that are dealt in my, in my courtroom, and uh, of course the lawyers of the corporate, of the corporate, of the corporates were trying and still trying to convince us that we should adopt the ruling of uh, the, chance of the Supreme Court of Delaware, but still it's not so easy for us to do that, and I'll try to show the figures that makes the difference between the Delaware Supreme Court, the Delaware court cases and the Israeli court cases. I'm using a new uh, presentation called Prezi. It's for the first time I'm using this and it's very uh, delicate, so please uh, take me for that. Some figures about the Israeli capital market. We have 618 companies are traded on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, 486, 486 publicly traded companies and other companies are financial instruments and bond companies. The total market of, I'm, I'm talking about data from the Tel Aviv Exchange statistics from end of May last month. Total market value of publicly traded corporate bonds is two, 272 billion new, new Israeli shekels. About 57 of the publicly traded share capital held by the public itself and not by the controlling shareholders. And the total market value of the shares in the publicly traded companies is about $746 billion. That's equal to 214 billion uh, shekels, equal to $214 billion. I will emphasize now the three major problems as I see them in the Israeli stock market or the Israeli, uh, especially the Israeli stock market. About 85% of the public companies in Israel controlled by a controlling shareholder. Unlike the states that the number is less than 10%. Empirical studies indicate that the average control premium in Israel is around 25 to 27%, compared with an average of 14% in the developed countries, and in the US it's less than 2%. 24 major business groups control about 23, 23 of the publicly traded companies in Israel. And 68% of the total stock market capitalization is controlled by 24 major business companies or groups in Israel. Recent developments in Israel, as I, I can proudly say part of it, they have been made in the last, all of it has been made in the last four or five years since Late 2010, we'll start with the legislation and legislative amendments, amendments 16 to 22 of companies law, then the Tel Aviv District Court Economic Division established in 2010, 15 of December, 
Inspired by the Court of Chancery of Delaware, the third amendment was the administrative enforcement to enforce security laws by Israeli security authority. The fourth was private enforcement through der derivative actions and class actions. And I have to say that we have been seeing in the last few years a huge increase of cases brought to, to court, to our court, through these uh, uh, der derivative and action, uh, class actions cases. And the final one, and one of the most important one, is the Committee of Increasing Competitiveness in the Economy. That is late, in the last two months. And most of the recommendations were adopted, primarily the reduction pyramids and the separation of financial and non-financial holdings. These were, as I said, recently legislated in manner of spreading and widening the base of the pyramid structure in Israel. Hopefully, I'm not wrong now with the arrows. Okay, we'll come to the U.S. capital markets. I don't know how to to say that figure, but I believe that it's 18 <laughs> trillion or 18 super trillion. <laughs> Decentralization control, only 23 of the market capitalization is controlled by business group, only point, less than 1% of all listed companies are controlled through a pyramidic, 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 pyramidal structure in, in the states. And I hope that one day we can put that sign near the Tel Aviv District Court. Welcome to, to the District Court of Tel Aviv, the Economic Division, but we're not allowed to do that. Which we'll never be allowed to do that. Which shows <laughs> More than 50% of the publicly traded companies in the United States, including 64 of the <coughs> Fortune 500, have incorporated in Delaware and Anyone of us have, that have been in Delaware, you would think, because of these figures, that Delaware is double than New York or double than California. But if you go through from Philadelphia to New York, you'll find it difficult to see Delaware. It's a very small state, but as we can see from the figures that it says, I mean, not only in the use, in the, not only the 500 fortune, but almost every Every country in the world is looking forward to see what your decisions are and try to adapt some of it that can be adapted in, the, in, in, in this country at least. I want, I, Delaware is encouraging every country in the world to come and register in Delaware, not in any other country in, in the States, any other state in the States, or any other country in the world. <coughs> I will speak about the last developments in the Israeli market, adopting standards of judicial review. We have been uh, hearing today from Judge Holland and Judge Ronen about the, the difference between the business judgment rule and the entire fairness. We are dealing with these cases now these days. The MFW is being, is being dealt now these days in Israel in separate cases. And uh, as far as I know, we, we respect very much the, uh, the ruling of the uh, MFW, but we are not completely convinced that we have, we have to adopt it in 100% in that way that you, you have adop adopted that. And that is because of the differences between the power of controlling shareholder in the Israel, in the Israeli market and non-power of, of non-existing of controlling shareholders in the states almost in, 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 in that percentage. Reconsideration and appeal, the law in Israel, the new law now gave, gave a rise to a new procedure according, according to which an approval to file case action or derivative claim should be reconsidered by a panel of three judges from the same tribunal. That means we don't have to, for the decisions that approve the class action 
in the economic division, we decide that loses the case, doesn't go to the Supreme Court of Israel, but comes to the a panel of three judges of the economic division in the district court. Hopefully, that is because the, our Supreme Court, unlike the, the American Supreme Court, suffers from a endless a numbers of cases they have to deal with. If I have to compare the Supreme Court to the United States, they are dealing with 85 cases every year. Our Supreme Court is dealing with more than 10,000 cases a year. So. If, if, every, if every rule from our court will go to the Supreme Court, I have to wait on the line for its time to come, and it can take, and it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, 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 a prison guy, a, a guy in a prison that you have to deal with this case immediately, and it's not a public case that you have to deal with it immediately, so it will be, it will be waiting in the waiting list. It can take six months or a year, and in, our, in, in cases that we are dealing with, we, the companies cannot wait such a long time to get a ruling, a final ruling from the court, uh, why the, uh, all these amendments meant to get an, uh, to achieve a, a, a goal that these cases will be dealt, you said, about 90%, 90 days for, for a ruling. We try to adopt these uh, methods in Israel and try to give the ruling as soon as possible, because companies need that, not only the confidence, but the ability to know that the court can supply the final ruling within a reasonable time, and not influencing their future uh, plans, and not to postpone them for a year or two years until the court will give his ruling. And about using the independent board committee, I have to say that Companies in Israel are, adopt, are lately, recently, adopting this method very in almost in every case that is dealt with in, in the courts now these days. And that is because, I'm not saying we uh, have educated the lawyers, they, the lawyers have educated themselves that it's much easier for them to come to the court and say we have, the company have, uh, have already stated about the independent board committee as a way to try to convince the court not to intervene the decisions that made by the, uh, these uh, uh, committees. Uh, I would say, Zohar asked me to say some words about the, how do I see the, in the future, the development, the developments in the future in the Israeli stock market. Uh, I would say that it isn't, as we see, it isn't a combat between the controlling shareholders, even though they are controlling over 85% of the uh, companies in Israel. It's not a combat between the controlling shareholders and the, and, uh, the, uh, the shareholders themselves. It's not a, the combat between the bad guys and the good guys, as we see. Controlling shareholders, we believe that have the same target as other shareholders to increase the confidence of the public in the stock market and by that to, to create more profitable businesses in the market. The court itself doesn't have an agenda. We don't, we don't stand by the shareholders against the controlling shareholders. But as the last the amendments in the Israeli stock market, we see very uh, important to assure that the stock market or the, the behavior of the controlling shareholder will not affect and influence the, uh, uh, the price of the shares in a matter that uh, we like to think that we can assure the, the shareholders to have the feeling that the court will support them whenever the stock controlling shareholder is trying to get to gain the, uh, the best of the company for himself and not for the shareholders. But it's not the good, buy, good guys against the bad guys. It's the, the trying to find a, a way or a, a fair formula 
that balances the power of the controlling shareholder in order to enforce a fair dealing, first of all, and to encourage the investors by applying transparency and fair dealing rules. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Justice Joram Dintiger, for Justice Randy Holland, which I'm sure you know, he wrote the Supreme Court decision on the NFW case, to Justice Ruth Romer, Justice Khaled Kabu. Thank you. Thank you.